All right, so here is the uh, second set of problems you sent me. And so what I'm going to do here is I went through the uh, the textbook and picked out questions that were pretty similar, not exactly, but pretty similar um, to kind of review with you, and then you can go back and try these questions on your own. So <clears throat> the first one says, find the equation of the parabola that best fits the uh, criteria. And so right here, you know if your x value matches on your vertex and your focus, you know you're dealing with a parabola that opens up or down. And then if the, if the y values match, then you know you're dealing with one that's kind of on its side that opens to the right or the left. And so here's the standard form equation right here. And so h and k refer uh, to the vertex values right here. And so, well, for this particular example right here, this will be my H and this will be my K. And then <clears throat> A is going to be um, the distance from the, uh, the focus uh, down to the vertex or up to the vertex, depending on what case we're talking about. And then this distance going through the foci, the, the line right here, that's, gonna, that's where the 4A comes from right there. And so the best thing to do on all these really is to get a picture. The, the more you can visualize it, the, the easier this is going to be. And so let's go ahead and plot what we know. So we know my vertex is over 2, down 3, so it's going to be right there. And then, so that's my vertex. And then I know that the, uh, the focus in this example is over 2, down 5, so I'm actually going to be right there, the focus. So I already, I know what my A value is going to be. Um, and you kind of have to be careful because this one is going to open um, down, kind of somewhat like this. Okay. And so, um, and actually, let me, let me redo that because I do want to be accurate on this. I don't want to screw you up. Um, <clears throat> so if my, my A is uh, 2 right here, um, then that line going across is going to be 8. So that means I'm going to go all the way out to here and all the way out to here. So this thing's going to open at, at a pretty wide, um, pretty wide opening right there. So it looks something like that. Um, and so they want us to come up with that equation. <clears throat> so you do have to be careful here because my A value technically is going to be negative 2 because the foci is 2 units below the vertex, so A is going to be negative 2. I know my H and my K, so I'm ready to write the equation. So it's going to be X minus 2 squared equals, then 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8 in front. And then, uh, let's see, then we're going to have Y minus negative 3, which will become a plus 3. And so that is the equation for, um, for my example right here. So just use what we did here, just use it with the other information above. All right, let's look at our next one. So this one, it's kind of a similar question, except they just give you different pieces of information, but they give you enough to kind of figure this out. And so, <clears throat> let's see. So here's yours, but I'm going to work this one right here. So this time they tell me where the focus is. It's going to be at, let's see, negative 2 and then um, up four, so right there, that's where my focus is going to be. And then uh, my directrix is going to be at x equals four, which is right here. And so that, <clears throat> the distance from here to the foci, the, the midway points where the vertex is going to be, because that's what the, the foci and the directrix, that's what they are. They're equal, the parabola is equal distance from both those two um, things right there. So I know that that's where my uh, vertex is. And uh, let's see, so that would mean that my A value, and once again, it's kind of going, it's going to the left or backwards. So the A value is going to end up being a negative three. <clears throat> and so this thing's going to open up uh, pretty wide. Let's see, because it's going to go six in each direction, which is going to be way off my graph. But either way, you still kind of get a feel for what this looks like. It's going to look something like that. It opens really, really wide, actually. Um, 
but even with that, I mean, now I have enough information because now I know that the vertex is at one, four. And so I have everything I need. So just be careful when you fill in your H and your K here because they are going to be uh, flip-flopped kind of compared to the first one. So we're going to have Y minus four squared equals and then four times negative three, which is negative 12 and then X minus one. And there we go. So that's for uh, my example right here. All right. On to the next one. So let's see, given, uh, give the focus. So they want us to give us the focus. They give us enough information to where you should be able to figure out the vertex pretty easily and figure out A pretty easily. And so once again, the, <clears throat> the thing that's going to help you the most is by having a picture. And to make this problem a little bit more like the one, um, like the one I have up here, I'm going to go ahead and make this four negative, just to make it more similar to the the one that you're going to have to work in a moment. So let's see. Uh, this is the, my x. The h goes with x, and the k goes with y. So that means my vertex is at one negative three, right? So be careful because it's going to be the opposite of what you have there, right? So positive one and negative three. So that's where my vertex is going to be. It's going to be at one negative three right here. And then, so if basically 4a, oops, let me, I don't know why I wrote it that way. There we go. 4a is equal to negative 4. So that would mean that my a value is equal to negative 1. And so this is where my vertex is. And so my focus would be 1 to the left right there. That would be my, where my focus is. Okay. And I think that's what they were asking for, right? Yeah, what, give, uh, give the focus. So the focus on this one, this particular one, is going to be at 0, negative 3. 0, negative 3. Okay, so the way I got that, I found the vertex, found my A value, and that's going to give me my distance between my vertex and focus. And since it was negative, I went, uh, my X value, basically, I went to the left to decreasing instead of increasing. So just being the devil's advocate real quick, if it would have been a positive four, then it would have been a positive one. My focus would have been over here instead at two, negative three. But anyways, all right, moving on. So let's see this one that says, give the focus again. Um, very similar to the one we just did, except you have to do the completing the square. And if I recall, you said that you were pretty good at that. But let's go ahead and practice it, just to get a little extra practice, and just making sure, yeah, they're fairly similar. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, what this is the way I like to do it. It might not be done the exact same way in the video, but they're all kind of the same way. But what I like to do is put plus blank, and then I have my plus 2x, and then I have my minus 5. And then uh, I'm going to put a minus blank, and then equals 0, right? And so the reason I put a plus blank and a minus blank is because whatever I put here, I'm going to have to, you know, uh, back counterbalance that. And so I need to factor this. And so I need to, I need this to be a perfect square trinomial. And the way the pattern works is that this value here is going to be half of that and then, um, and then square it, right? So half of this value and then square it. So half of two is one, one squared is one. So I'm going to add one here. And so then I have to subtract one here just to counter it, right? Okay. And so then this right here is going to factor into y plus 1 squared. And then we're going to have a plus 2x and a minus 6 equals 0. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to move this to the other side so I can kind of have it in that familiar format. And... So let's see, we end up with y plus 1 squared equals negative 2x plus 6. And then what I need to do is factor out this value here. Once again, because I kind of want to make it look consistent with the other problems that I've been working. And so let's see. So I still have my y plus 1 squared. And then here I'm going to pull out a negative 2, and that's going to turn this into x minus three and then now it should look pretty familiar with the ones i've done previously 
And so this is going to be a, a parabola that opens up to the, to the left. Okay, and the reason I know that is because I have the y plus 1 squared. That indicates that the parabola is kind of on its side, basically. And then the negative 2 right here, we'll figure out my a value in just a second. But that indicates that I'm open to the left. And so let's do my vertex first. So be careful. My vertex is actually going to be at 3 and then negative 1. So just be careful about that because we got the x and y in a different order than uh, maybe we're familiar with. So let's see, we're going to get 3, negative 1, which would be right here. And then now we need to figure out the a value. Well, we know that this is 4a equals negative 2. And so we'll divide both sides by 4, and we'll get that a equals negative 1 half, right? So I'm just going to put my vertex, or I'm sorry, my focus just slightly, you know, to the left half a unit. And I think that's all they wanted, right? So what's its focus? Yes. So my focus is going to be at 2.5, so 2.5, and at negative 1. Or you could do it as uh, 5 halves if you wanted to for the 2.5. Or you could do it as 2 and 1 half. All three of those are fine, however you want to put that. All right, I think I have one left. No, I've got a couple left. Um, okay, so looking at this one, um, find the directrix now. So uh, same type deal. Um, you're going to have to figure out what that A value is, and then that should help you pretty easily get your um, directrix. So here on this one, I know my vertex is going to be at negative 2. Four. So let's see it. Negative two and then up four. So I'm going to be right there. And then my a value, well, I know that 4a is equal to that eight right there in my particular example. And so I'm going to divide by four on both sides. And so I get a equals two. So two to the right, that would be my focus. And then if I go two backwards, that would create that vertical line for my directrix which would be at x equals negative 4. Okay. All right. Got a couple more. Let's see. So this one, once again, find the directrix. Uh, just, once again, it's going to require a little bit of completing the square. I know you got that big number there, but still it shouldn't really be too bad for you. Um, so I'm going to focus on number 11 right here. So once again, I'm going to kind of do my little, I'm going to have x squared plus 6x, and I'm going to put plus blank. Then we got minus 4y plus 1, and then I'm going to put minus blank. Just to remind myself what I do to, um, what I do here, I need to counterbalance that. So once again, I take half of this, take half of that, which would give us a 3, and then square it, which would give me a 9. So I'm going to put a 9 here, but then i got to put a minus 9 right there. And so, let's see, this is going to factor nicely into x plus 3 squared. Then let's see, we have a minus 4y. Then this right here will simplify into a minus 8 equals 0. And then once again, I'm going to finish kind of cleaning this up to make it look like, put it in the format that I'm familiar with. So let's see, we'll add 4y, we'll add 8. And let's see, then we will factor out a 4 from here. And we're going to have 4 times y plus 2. Okay, and so now I know that my vertex is going to be at, let's see, negative 3, negative 2. And then I can, hopefully we're getting a little better with this. So this is my uh, my 4a, 4 times a. So a must be 1. So since the x has the squared, I know it's a parabola, and I know it's going to open up because my a value is positive. So let's go ahead and plot what I got so far. So let's see, negative 3, negative 2, which would be right there. Um, I know it's going to open up, so that means the focus is 1 above that. That would be my focus. Then the directrix is 1 below it, and in this case, it's going to be a horizontal line at y equals 
negative 3. y equals negative 3. All right. Let's see. I believe. Okay, this is my last one. Kind of similar, except that they want you to pick the graph. It's like a multiple choice on the homework, and you got a bunch of graphs to choose from. And so really, it's kind of more of what we've been doing. I'm just going to make sure I put everything on here. And this might be a little big. It might be beyond my, yeah, hmm. we'll see. Um, yours won't be too big, but mine, yeah, mine's going to be on my graph. But anyways, we'll go ahead and do it. So let's see. So we're going to have y squared plus 12y um, plus blank plus an x plus 28 and then minus blank equals 0. So half of this is 6 and then squared is 36. And then over here I have to subtract 36, right? And then let's see. So this right here is going to go ahead and factor into y plus 6 squared. And then we're going to have a plus x and then a minus 8 equals 0. And then we got to, once again, move this stuff to my other side. And so let's see, we're going to have y plus 6 is equal to negative x plus 8. So this one's going to, oh, yeah, I don't want to forget my square. This one's going to end up being pretty interesting because I need to factor out that negative right there. And so when I do so, that's going to cause a sign change. So it's going to become x minus 8 right there. Okay, so now what do I know about this so far? Well, I know since the squares with the y, it's going to open up on its side. And then because my a value is going to be negative because of this, it's going to open like this, right? So that would help me narrow, oops, that would help me narrow this down somewhat. So um, what I have to do next now, let's see, I know what, oops, let me, I'm going to have to pause this for a second. Okay. Hopefully that fixed it. Let's see. So here we are. So I know it's going to open and go to the left, but um, let's see. So I know the vertex is going to be at, be careful, it's going to be 8, negative 6. So like I said, this is going to be a little off my graph, but I'll just kind of do the best I can. So let's see. We're going to be over 8, uh, down 6. So roughly about right here will be where my vertex is. Um, and then my a value, this is interesting. So 4a equals, that's an understood negative 1 in front. So negative 1. So then when I divide by 4 on both sides, I'm going to get basically a is equal to negative 1 fourth. So a is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, my vertex is going to be 1 fourth unit. I mean, I'm sorry, my focus will be a fourth of a unit to the left. So that will actually be at um, 7 and 3 fourths, and then still down 6 right there. Or you could put it at 7.75 or something like that. Um, and then my directrix will be a fourth of a unit behind it, like that. And so then my next point will be one up, or no, a half a unit actually be a half a unit up and a half a unit down from there. Um, as I try to connect this for this parabola, so this one will actually be a pretty skinny parabola. And um, anyways, that should be enough for you to kind of narrow this down in order to figure out what multiple choice option it is. Now yours is this one up here, and this one kind of has some similarities to what I did here. It should actually be a little bit easier, I think. I think your A value will be a lot nicer. You shouldn't have a fraction like I did. Um, but anyways, well, um, here you go. And if you need some more help on this, just uh, let me know.